Yes, I, brothers and sisters, lovers, haters, friends and neighbours, ladies and gentlemen, boys, girls and vibrations. Hope everyone's well. I'm sat at the tar plant. Told me it's going to be an hour or so. The joys. So I thought I'd jump on quickly and review Paul Venice's fight from the weekend. Right. Unfortunately, I couldn't be there because I was refereeing the WBKB out west at Workington, which was a great show, some great fights. I loved being a ref and I would like to do some more of it. Now, I watched the Paul Venice fight when I was out there. Now, in case nobody knows, Paul Venice is a brother from another mother to me. You know, I love the lad to bits. He's a massive part of my story. He's a massive part of my recovery. He is, in fact, the reason I got into recovery. When I first met Paul, we were driving down to Manchester. We had a straightener arranged with someone in a gym down there. And I remember thinking, as I was speaking to Paul, I could feel me drawing inspiration from the man himself. I knew what type of life he'd led. I knew what type of person he'd been. <clears throat> and I was attracted to the serenity. I was attracted to the life that he was living at that moment. I was attracted to it. You know, and Paul first showed me the power of suggestion. Paul suggested a lot of things to me on that trip. And it was only five, six weeks after that encounter that I took him up on some of those suggestions and it changed the course of my life forever. So I'll be eternally grateful for the conversation that we had, a God-given conversation, which literally changed my life for the better. So thank you, Paul. Now, his fight at the weekend. <clears throat> Let's not forget and let's have it right here. That fight was all about Paul. It was Paul's comeback. It was Paul was the main event. Paul has been out for seven years. It was Paul, Paul, Paul. It was all about Paul, right? So that was, let's get that out the way, right? The lad came to have a go. What I thought, the type of opponent I thought he was gonna get was someone who was gonna, skive about and try and stretch the fight and you know have a bit of a duck and a dive and try and avoid the action is what i thought his opponent was going to do i was wrong his opponent come out the gate <clears throat> and what i seen was a big strong man trying to show paul immediately that he had some power and he wasn't shy on using it and to be honest i think paul froze because I wasn't expecting it. I can imagine Paul wasn't expecting him to come out like that. And what I seen was Paul f f froze. He sort of tucked up and hid behind his guard with his chin down, which is kind of what we do when we get caught by surprise in there. And I seen the lad land one or two decent punches, landed a good meaty looking heavy right hand over the top of Paul's guard, which hit him like on the top of the head, which looked a good punch. And then he settled into it a little bit and he, he rammed a proper stiff stepping jab right down the pipe between the guards. I thought that was another good punch. Then Paul caught him with a couple of punches which didn't look like the best connections and the lad went down. And Paul caught him with another punch that didn't look like the best connection and the lad went down. Now, anybody that's ever seen Paul's highlight reel from the K1, Paul does have a peculiar technique. You know, he, when you look him punching in sparring or on the pads or on the bag. He doesn't get full rotation. He doesn't sit down and step through. You know, it doesn't look like he's generating a great deal of talk. But let me assure you, when you're on the end of those punches, he, crit he hits incredibly hard. You know, ask me who's been in with him. Ask Jack Draper who's been in with him. Jack Draper's a big capable man who's been in with a lot of good boxers and sparred and fought up and down all over the place for years and Jack said he's never felt power like it you know so what does that tell you that tells you that Paul is incredibly powerful you know listen to people who know I can only imagine the uh, the non-achievers and the armchair experts uh, are out in numbers I haven't read anything negative but I haven't read anything on it but you know, listen to the people who know. Paul hits very hard. And his technique is peculiar. You know, all the power seems to be right on the last three inches of the punch. Right on the very end. And, you know, Paul hits very, very hard. Now, first of all, I want to commend his opponent, um, 
Hayes for getting in there and having a go. You know, he, he tried to get mucked in in the first round. And to that, I say, fair play to him. He, he came to have a go. Paul done what we all expected him to do. He finished his opponent, right? Fair enough. But, you know, he'll learn from that. He's knocked the cobwebs off. He got caught a bit off guard and he froze a little bit in the first round. I don't think he'll mind me saying that. That's what I've seen. I've seen him, I've seen him freeze momentarily. You know, and, and, and you know, we learn from these things. You know, hopefully he'll look and he'll learn and he'll take bits from it. And, you know, on to the next one. It's as simple as that. I am keen to see Paul in a bare knuckle fight now. Now I want to see him in a bare knuckle or with them little four ounce gloves on. You know, I think that's the next step up now. And be good to see him in there with a a better calibre of opponent. Not that the lad he was in with wasn't big and powerful and looked like he hit hard, but he didn't look like he had the best technique and he didn't look like he had, you know, an extensive fighting history. You know, and in fairness, if Paul freezes like he did in that fight against a very big, powerful, capable man, you know, things could be very different. So hopefully Paul can learn everything he can from that fight. I'll be behind him all the way. Paul's doing my corner with Aaron and Wayne at Milton Keynes. So that might be the next time I see him. So well done, Paul. Speak to you soon, bro.